congratulations, Dr. Doyle. Uh, you have discovered something absolutely incredible, uh, the Ansnet boy. Can you explain uh, the significance and actually what you did come to discover? Sure, let me give you a little bit of background on this. Uh, actually, the boy was discovered in 1968. Right. And, uh, but what we just completed and in, in what was published in Nature last week was a genetic profile that has been done on this boy. Now we know who he was and, and who basically his descendants are, or his parents' descendants. Are they any descendants still trace, directly traceable? In fact, 80% uh, of all of the Indians on both continents are directly traceable to this young man. That's incredible. It's absolutely stunning. What is the larger implication? I mean, it, you made mention, and I've seen in the reports, that it's the oldest remains found in, in North America? Yeah. Yeah, it is the oldest remains. Um, you know, there are so many implications. Uh, well, one of the major ones that it, uh, you know, affects archaeology is that now um, pretty much any other hypothesis that that pitched the idea that uh, American Indians were not the first people here uh, on the continent, those hypotheses are pretty much laid to rest, I think, at this point. Although there are some scientists who are, you know, sticking to their guns and saying that Europeans walked over here from France across the Atlantic, uh, you know, 20,000 years ago or so. Um, I, we're, you know, my team and, and my co-authors on this publication really believe, and I think, you know, the vast majority of scientists and archaeologists believe that this study proves once and for all that it's been American Indians here since, you know, time immemorial for at least 14,000 years, at least. And uh, we've been the only ones here because that's, you know, the genetic profiles have been done for contemporary American Indians going down, you know, from Central America all the way down to the tip of South America. And all those profiles match uh, in the, the fact that this boy is their ancestor. Does the Bering uh, land bridge theory still hold water? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, uh, this same guy, Dr. S.K. Willisleff, who did the DNA research on this 12,500-year-old boy here in Montana, also did DNA research on a 24,000-year-old boy in Siberia. Um, interesting, there's, they're all children that are getting tested, and there's a couple other children that are involved with this. Uh, so this boy in Siberia, this 24,000-year-old boy, uh, known as the Malta boy, um, shares one-third of his genes with all of the American Indian people here. And the, those same, a lot of those same genes are also in Northern European people. And so the theory is that um, these Malta people coming up from Central Asia kind of divided and went in two different directions, you know, and of course interacting with people along the way. And that is the reason why today Europeans and American Indians share DNA. Uh, it was because they come from a common ancestor that was in Siberia uh, at least 20 to 24,000 years ago. 1450 KMMS, 1340 KPRK. My name is Chris Griffin in the studio with me, Dr. Shane Doyle. Uh, we're discussing his uh, publishing of the results of the Anzanek boy uh, discovered right here in Montana. Is this your findings only possible because of technology, the DNA testing technology? Absolutely. And, and I would even add to that that they're only possible due to cutting edge and advanced uh, genetic technology. This is the first time in history that uh, you know geneticists have been able to take very low quality DNA and actually get a nuclear genome from it. And so it required unbelievable amount of effort to get this done. Um, you know, not only technological advancements, but also uh, techniques um, on how to put this genome together. And so it was a Herculean task, really, uh, but they got it done. Do you find field work or lab work to be more important or rewarding? Oh, I love being outside. And uh, yeah, I, you know, I don't think anything beats that. Uh, I'm not a lab guy, um, you know, there are 42 co-authors on this paper. Uh, I think probably the vast majority of them are, are lab people who work in the Center for Geogenetics out in Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, but then there are also people like me who, you know, take care of the historical, archaeological,
psychological side, you know, the cultural issues that surround this whole thing, and really probably, you know, to my in my mind, one of the most important things of all, which is, what do we make of this, and what's the meaning behind it, and how do we as a society and as, you know, as a public, come to terms with this, and what does it, how is it relevant to us, and I think that, that's my role here outside of the lab. Yeah, because you led me right to my next question. What does this mean, and what are the implications of all of this? Well, you know, to the common person, you know, a lot of it probably is not going to be earth-shattering. I mean, I think probably most people assumed all along that American Indians had been here for, you know, 12,000 or more years, and that it was probably only them. Um, one thing I think that is remarkable that uh, we have to wrap our heads around is the fact that all these people are related you know I mean millions and millions of people are related I mean that is just to me one of the most amazing things about this whole thing is how did that happen and and how were all how was how were we able to you know stay healthy and keep our DNA you know healthy uh, throughout all that uh, through the course of time uh, but there's also a whole another side to this story you know uh, there's the Anzic boy himself and the way he was buried and his burial is really nothing short of kind of a North American King Tut um, you know the, what he was buried with is, is really kind of staggering I mean, he was buried with 125 different objects uh, you know a lot of them at this stage in the game obviously priceless um, but even back in those days, you know, 12,500 years ago, these items were very important and worth a lot. And, you know, the fact that they would bury them with a two-year-old boy who really had no social significance other than being a baby. You know, he wasn't a hunter or a warrior or a chief or a medicine man or anything like that. You know, the degree of uh, commitment that they showed um, to this boy, um, you know, that's a whole other piece to the story that people need to know about and that we need to kind of figure out and that we need to kind of try and place within the context of American Indian culture. So that's another big part of it. You, you, you can't, do you have any solid conclusions as to what are the impact, impacts are on the culture? Well, the American Indian people that I've spoken with so far have, you know, there's been a range of emotions, I think, for most people. Um, from, from the younger people that I've spoken with, you know, kind of a sense of awe and really, actually that's probably coming from everyone, um, but from, from the younger people more of a sense of uh, wonder about the science and what's behind it. Um, you know, from the older generations, kind of more of a measured response, you know, I think they're, they're pleased to know, you know, that now scientists can confirm that we've been here you know, on the other hand, you know, it's always going to be a sensitive issue when there's going to be uh, dead people involved and scientists kind of taking over and, you know, Indians kind of being on the side while their ancestors are kind of looked over. And so there's mixed feelings about the whole thing and, you know, just wanting to Native communities to feel good about this and not feel like they've been cheated or disrespected. Um, because this is all of our ancestor, and uh, you know, we all do have you know, a lot of considerations there. 1450 KMS, 1340 KPRK. My name is Chris Griffin. Dr. Shane Doyle is in the studio discussing uh, the uh, Anzic boy uh, found here in Montana in his recent discoveries published in Nature just last week. It is 818. We'll continue the conversation on the other side of two minutes.